Welcome back to the channel, you guys. My name is Brad. This is the Firefighters Financial Toolbox. Uh, recently, I got a comment, uh, actually a question from one of my subscribers who asked about REITs. Uh, I directed him to a video that I made over here. Uh, and he subsequently asked about uh, what I thought and some questions about some different uh, real estate ETFs, some REIT ETFs. I only know about VNQ, which is the Vanguard Real Estate Index uh, ETF form. Uh, I have the uh, index fund version of that in my Roth, but I had not really looked beyond Vanguard's to see what's out there. So I thought, in fairness, I would I would look at the DV uh, the ETFs available from the three big houses: Vanguard, Charles Schwab, and Fidelity. Uh, each one has a U.S. REIT index. Now, you guys, we're looking at U.S. properties only. Uh, when you get into international real estate, there's a whole bunch of different things you got to think about as far as uh, currency differences, different laws, different taxations. Uh, so I don't deal with that. There are some out there, I know, but we're going to focus on just ETFs that deal with REITs in the United States. So we're going to start with VNQ. That's the Vanguard Real Estate ETF. Uh, we see right now that it has a closing price of about seventy-one, oh, about $72. Uh, the fund has been around for quite a while for ETFs. Uh, it's been around since 2004. It does have a little bit higher expense ratio of 0.12%. So you're spending about $12 on $10,000 per year. Uh, it's a huge fund, you guys. It's got about $24.5 billion in assets under management. It has a hundred. 84 total holdings in there and a current distribution yield of about 4.6%. Now I know that this particular one uh, pays a dividend quarterly. Now you guys, one thing to think about with any REITs is you want to make sure you think about the taxes because remember when you get your dividend from a REIT, because of the way they're taxed, they are taxed as ordinary income. They do not get the qualified dividend lower rate of 15 or 20 percent so this is definitely something you want to think about if you're considering putting this into your portfolio you do not want to put it in taxable because you will be paying full tax on the dividends all right so we go on along and we see that this the msci us real estate index and that's a market cap index now we're going to take a look at all three of them and how they've done now you guys one thing we have to remember is everything this year has tanked. With with the current undergoings in the pandemic, real estate got hit very hard. So we'll take a look at the one year, and then we'll took it, take a look at the lifetime. Because I feel it's good. I feel the longer an ETF is around, the more, uh, a better sense you get of how well it actually works. So if we're looking at one year, we can see that it's down from a high of about $100 a share down to below 70 here. So if we look at the lifetime, we see that it's other than a pretty big tank, obviously in 2009 and a little bit down there at the end of 2018, up until the end of February, we were doing really well. And then it just kind of dropped off. If we look at the total return chart, we can see it looks pretty similar, you guys, and it tracks pretty darn close to the to the benchmark. Now let's take a look at what the top 10 holdings in this ETF are. So we see the first part is Vanguard Real Estate 2 Index. So it's got part of its own stuff. Uh, we got American Tower, Crown Castle International, which deals in uh, 5G towers, Prologis, Equinus, Digital Realty, SBA Communications, Public Storage, equity residential. So it looks like mostly all co commercial real estate and it's got some stuff in the realms of electronics and 5G as well. This is one that I currently hold, you guys. Uh, you know I'm a Vanguard guy, but in all honesty, I wanna take a look at all three companies. So that was Vanguard's. Let's take a look at Fidelity's version and that is ticker F-R-E-L. It's the Fidelity MISCI or MSCI Real Estate Index ETF. Uh, it currently has a price of about $21. This fund's been around only since 2015, you guys. So it's only got about a five-year track record right now. Now it does have a little bit lower expense ratio of 
0.08% or 8 basis points. Uh, and it's got about $805 million in assets under management. So a smaller fund to be sure. Now, you guys, this has 182 holdings as well. And it also tracks the MISCI USA real estate index. So this is going to follow the same index more or less that VNQ does. It's got a distribution yield currently of 4.59%. And if we look at the one year, it looks pretty much the same, you guys. If we go to the max, again, steady climbs except for some, well, because we started after 2009, we don't have that dip. But we see we've got a dip 2018, just like the other one, and then this year. And you can see it also is tracking very closely to its benchmark. Now, with that lower expense ratio, I do like that because, as we know, the less we pay for the fund, the more money we get to keep. So let's take it the top 10 holdings of this one. American Tower, Crown Castle again, Prologis, Equinus, Digital Realty, SBA. So, you guys, it looks like uh, the biggest difference in this one is you have some Simon property, and in Vanguard, they have some of their own real estate index in there. Uh, where this one does not have that. So you're going to have a little bit of difference in how that tracks. Uh, but that low expense ratio is nice. All right, let's take a look at what Schwab has to offer. A lot of people like Schwab, and I do too, you guys. Schwab, this is SCHH, and this is a Schwab US REIT ETF. Uh, currently has a price of about $33 a share. This fund's been around since 2011, so it's been around for about nine years, you guys. It's got the lowest expense ratio of the three at 0.07%, so about seven basis points. Uh, you can see this is also a little bit bigger fund. This is about $4.17 billion in assets under management. Now, where the differences start on this fund is that this index, is tr it tracks the Dow Jones U.S. Select REIT Index. And as you can see, it only has 95 holdings. So you've got a lot more concentration in less companies, which can be good and can be bad. So let's take a look and see how it's been doing. So if we look at the one year, they, it looks the same as the other ones, you guys, pretty much. If we look at the lifetime, you can see big dip here, 2011. And then again, 2018, looks like they all did, right? And here, if we look at the total return, though, we can see that there's a fair amount of deviation from its benchmark. It's at 14.8, and the underlying benchmark is 7.23. So that's some pretty significant deviation in its tracking of its benchmark. Let's take a look at the top 10 holdings for this one. Prologis, Digital Realty, Public Storage, Avalon Bay, well Tower, Simon Property. So you guys, a lot of the same companies here. And obviously in a little bit different uh, percentages. The thing that I like about all three of these ETFs, you guys, and I didn't say this before, was that they track property. Remember with REITs, you have two types of equity REITs and you have mortgage REITs. Now mortgage REITs are REITs that invest in the interest on mortgage-backed securities. So it's a little bit different in how it functions. These three ETFs are based solely on equity or property, which for me, if I'm buying a REIT, I'm looking at it for property because the idea behind getting into REITs is for people to be able to invest in real estate at a reasonable price. So anyway, you guys, here's three different options of ETFs for a person who doesn't want to go shopping for individual REITs and try to do all the homework that they can put some money into a fund and get their feet dabbling into the world of investing in real estate with a fairly small amount of money for an initial investment. Anyway, I hope you guys got something out of this. If you did, do me a favor, drop a like. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, you guys, hit the button, ring the bell. You'll get notified each time I make a video. I make at least one, sometimes a couple of weeks. So thanks a lot for coming by. We'll see you.